In this demonstration, we will show a real quick sample of how to set up and use the 960 grid system as a CSS framework. Now, the first thing I've done is I've set up a Dreamweaver site with CSS in the appropriate folders, and I have a index.html file seeing my root folder ready to use. So I'm going to first link the three 960 grid system files by using attached style sheet command then browsing going to my CSS folder first one I want to choose is the reset CSS file this is going to reset all your CSS so it's the same regardless of what browser you're using you can choose the media for this example we'll just choose all say OK then I'm going to repeat this process for the other two files including the text.css and then the actual 960.css file. I also have one additional file that I'm going to bring in, and this is just to show some styles that we would have for the elements that we're going to define on the CSS. I'm using this just to put some background colors into the divs so that you can see where they are. Now with the 960 grid system, the first thing that you have to do is you have to have a containing div that's going to define how many columns we're going to use. For this example, we're going to use the 12 column 960. To set this up, I'm going to go into my insert bar under layout and choose to insert a new div. And I'm going to give it a class of container 12. I also sometimes like to give this an ID, which I'll usually just call container. Now both the container 12 and the container 16 will set up a grid system that's 960 pixels wide, depend upon if you want 12 or 16 columns inside your grid system. We're choosing the 12, that gives us 12 columns to work with, <coughs> and it's a pretty simple layout. This is an important thing that you need to have determined before you choose which container you want to use. You do not have to give an ID. This is just done if we want to apply any special stylings to this div. From here you can automatically see with the uh, visual help guide that Dreamer gives you the dot outline where it gives us a column that's 960 pixels wide. You'll also notice that it is automatically centered for us. These are things that we automatically get as soon as we define what div uh, what container we're using. I'm going to delete out this content real quick and then we're going to create a little header. Now the header we're not going to want to take the entire width and we'll say we want it to be for example 8 columns wide. I'm going to choose the insert div. We're going to insert at the insertion point and we're going to choose a grid of 8 and I'm going to give this an ID of my header. Now you can see, not centered as you would expect a header to be. And if I have a header, I'll sometimes want it to be centered. And so unless I'm planning on having something in the other four columns, we now have an off-centered grid. A quick easy fix is we've got a couple of additional helper classes, which the 960 grid system uses. So where it says class grid underscore eight, in my code view, I put my cursor there, give it a space. This way we can apply multiple classes to the same div. I'm going to say give me a push of 2. Now when I push 2, you'll notice that it moves my column over. And this is because my 8 columns, it's being pushed 2 columns to my left. All it's doing is increasing the margin on my left hand side. Now if I try to put anything else on this row, it's going to put me over to my, over the last 2 columns beside my grid. And I don't want to use that where my header is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to, to the code view. I'm going to create a couple divs. This is going to be a class. I'm going to choose a clear. And if you have a div that's a class clear, you'll see here where it automatically puts in this second div. You can see by the colors that I defined in my style sheet where this is. So I'm going to save this real quick though. I'm going to turn on live view so you can see what it does. you notice that that bottom div completely disappears. This is because if you look at the CSS styles for your clear, it actually has a height of zero and a width of zero, and it has something called the overflow pattern, which is set to none. So you're not going to see anything, any text whatsoever that's in there. 
all it's doing is saying it's force us to move to a new row. So this is going to be a nice little thing that we're going to have to use from time to time whenever we want to force to go to a new row. 